Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at one of the brand new YSL. These are the Couture Mini Clutch Palettes. I have two of them, but today we're just going to be concentrating on the one Babylon Roses, and that is number 400, and that is the one that I'm wearing at the moment. And I'll let you know now that I think these are a beautiful beautiful formula. The other one that I picked up is Casbah Spices and I will show that to you in a separate video and soon I'll show you me applying this eyeshadow quad and then later on we'll take a look and do some comparison swatches as well. So this is the outside packaging that it comes in. This has four grams of product and it is made in Italy and this also has a shelf life of 24 months from day of opening. Now not every shadow in this quad but at least two of them do contain talc so I thought I'd let you know because there are some of my subscribers that don't like talc in their products. The packaging of these is really really beautiful. It is just, oh, I've got fingerprints all over it and that's why I'm pleased about the front packaging because you don't get fingerprints on it. So it just has the gold around here and all around the edges. It is just a click closure and on the front it has this faux leather with the YSL logo down the middle just like the pattern here is like their clutch handbags and it also is quite spongy to touch as well. I really like the packaging. I think it is really really beautiful. So I'm just going to hold it up a little bit closer so you can take a look. And out of the two colour stories that I've got, this one Babylon Roses and the other one Casbah Spices, I love both of them, but I do prefer the colour story of the one that I'm wearing today more. I just think it looks really beautiful. This is the third time that I've worn this quad. The other two times is when I've had to go out for the day. These last really well during the day. I have oily eyelids and I find they have really good wear. The times that I've been wearing them has been at least eight if not 10 to 12 hours and I find that they look just as beautiful towards the end of the day. There is a little bit of fading but they don't go patchy in any way so to me they look just as good as when I first applied them. Now I've already got my full face of makeup on as you can see so I'm doing it a little bit differently this video. Everything that I have got on my face today I will have listed and linked in the description box below. So inside the palette has a generous size mirror I would say the packaging isn't overly heavy. It's not something like Victoria Beckham or anything like that, but I do think it feels quite luxurious. So you've got the Junior Size Mirror in here, and this is the color story of Babylon Roses. So you've got those mauvey tones, rosy tones, and a bit of plum as well. And you've got two mattes and two shimmer shades. And it also comes with a couple of applicators. One is a double edge sponge. One end may be slightly pointier than the others. And I do find these quite handy sometimes for placing products, especially around the inner corner of the eye. And the other one is just a really small brush. So I'm going to hold this up a bit closer for you to take a look at and also turn down the lights in front of me as well. So down the bottom here are the matte shades and up the top are the two shimmer shades. And YSL described these shades as a rose quartz, an icy rose, a dark rose and also a burgundy rose. So I will do swatches of this quad and also some comparison swatches as well. But first we'll go to where I am applying the shadow and I also talk while I'm applying them and just let you know what I think of the formula. So I'm going to take the Sonia G, the classic crease one, and I'm going to start off with the shade here. Now as I was saying, I have worn this twice and I think the formula is really beautiful. Now I also do have eyeshadow primer on because I have oily eyelids and because of that no matter what eyeshadow I wear it won't last so that's why I always have eyeshadow primer on. These go on really smoothly and you can just see how beautifully they blend. Just really really beautiful. 
again you can just just do the same on the other eye I think these are quite pigmented I think they are more pigmented than say perhaps a Chanel eyeshadow palette but not as pigmented as say a Natasha Denona or a Pat McGrath so I think they're just for me it's really just enough pigment you can go in light and build up but one thing about these I do love how they blend they just blend out absolutely beautifully so I'm going to take the soft shader and I'm going to stay with the shade and I'm going to run that under my lower lash line I'm going to take the Rafa 14 and I'm going to go into the deeper shade here and there is quite a bit of pick up I'm just going to pop a little bit in the corner so there is quite a bit I think I might just put the excess on the side I can always add a little bit more over there in a minute and just blend it out just towards the center and I'm going to take it into the crease and I'm going to just take it just slightly above as well so you can see the shadow when my eyes open and then I'll just go into the shadow a little bit just to add a little bit more on the side then I'm going to take the Sonia G the pencil one I'm going to stay with this deep shade and just put some in the outer corner and just take it through just to the center or just past Then we're going to take the refer number two and go into the shade here and just put that over the rest of my lid just through here and I'll take a little bit up through here as well. So you could definitely wet these to get more impact but for me I think that is enough impact. I think just really really beautiful so I'll just put a little bit on the other side and finally I'm going to take the Rafa 3 and go into the lighter shade this is the pink one and I'm going to put this in the inner corner and I'm also going to just take it just on my lower lash line just through here now sometimes with some palettes and different brands that I use, when I go to use the Rafa 3, sometimes it doesn't place down enough product. And if you wanted more impact, what you could do, and I use this with the Tom Ford ones and the Dior ones, sometimes Chanel as well, is that with the sponge that this comes with, one has more of a pointed tip, and you could certainly just put that in there and use that to place down more product but I've really got enough at the moment but I'm just going to pop a little bit more on just to show you but it picked up beautifully with the Rafa number three and normally I wouldn't need to put any more on but the sponge applicator does work really well just gives you a little bit more control as well I'm just going to go back to the Rafa 14 and as I normally do just look straight ahead in the mirror here and just make sure things are even and then finally what I do is just grab a clean fluffy brush and just go over the edges just to soften it all out and now off camera I'm just going to put on some eyeliner and mascara and then when I come back we'll do some comparison swatches so this is Babylon Rose's swatch and it's from left to right and top to bottom and they do swatch out really smoothly which is no surprise because they're smooth when I put them on and they blend out really beautifully as well so the first comparison that I've got is one of the Chanel tweed ones and this was this was the tweed purpure one so I'm going to swatch that first and again this is going to be left to right and top to bottom so this is the Chanel tweed So you can see that the Chanel Tweed one, it's not 
quite as pigmented as the YSL and I thought that was the case after using these YSL eyeshadows. They have got a little bit more pigment than the Chanel Tweed. So probably the closest colour would be this one next to the shade here and possibly these two shades here. And I've also got one of the Guerlain quads. This is Majestic Rose. So we'll swatch this one. And first of all, we're going to swatch this brown shade. And I don't really think it would be. So I'm going to swatch it next to this one here. But as you can see, the formula is different as well. And also this is really brown. And there's no browns in the YSL quad. Next one I'm going to swatch could be more closer to this shade here. So these two are fairly close. And the other one that I thought may be closer would be this shimmer one here. So I'm just going to swatch that next to this shade here. And I'll actually just go over that again. So this one has a little bit more rose in it than the Guerlain one. I'm just going to turn the light down in front of me just so you can take a closer look. So this is the Guerlain. This is YSL. Here's Guerlain here. And this is Guerlain. And this is the YSL here. And this was the Chanel portrait one. And there was one shade in a Tom Ford quad. This was the Violet Satine that I thought may be similar. So I'll swatch and take a look. And that is the shade down here. So I'm just going to swatch that. It looks like it has a bit more purple in it. So I'm going to, hopefully you'll be able to see, just going to swatch that down here. So that definitely has more purple than these two here. These are more of that plum and this is definitely a cooler purple shade. And a Dior Quint that I thought there may be some similar ones and this is 1947. This is Miss Dior. I think this is a really beautiful Quint and no it's not the new formula. This is the old formula. So I think for comparisons I'll swatch this shade here and see how that compares to the shimmer in the YSL. Actually what I'm going to do is swap arms <laughs> so I've got room. So this is the YSL quad and then we'll go into the Dior 1947. So the shade out of 1947, I'm actually going to swatch it right by this one here. This is more of a topper from Dior and again it has just got more pink in it than the YSL one. The YSL one's definitely got more of a rose base in it. And then we'll take a look at the middle shade from the Dior 1947 and see what that looks like. So that isn't similar to any of these two shades. And finally I will just swatch the darker shade in the 1947 Quint. This is the darker shade. So this has a lot more brown in it than the darker shade in the YSL quads. And then finally going to take a look at another Dior Quint. And this one is 2-2 in the original formula. And a bit of this is broken so I can't really hold it up. But if you're looking at the quint, I'm going to swatch first. It's the top right shade. And this one is it's more of a topper as well, I think. But I'll just pop it here. I get a feeling this is going to be, this is a topper shade. So I don't think it's really going to show very much at all. I'll go over it even more. This is a shade that's actually broken in the quint. And it's sort of going through the other colours a bit as well. So... This is a topper, so it's different finish to this one anyway. And it's only barely visible. And again, it sort of has more pink in it. Then I'm just going to go to the middle shade in Tutu. So this is the middle shade in Tutu. 
and again has more brown in it than the matte shade in the YSL quad. And then finally we'll take a look at the darker shade in Tutu. So this is the darker shade. So that is a lot darker and a lot different to these two shades, especially, well both of them, but the darker shade in the YSL quad. So out of all the different eyeshadows that I swatched, I think the most similar quad, and it's not exactly the same, there were a couple of shadows in here that are a little bit similar, and that's the Gulan the Majestic Rose, and that was this shade here, although that has more pink in it, not quite that rosiness that the YSL has, and the shade here comparable with the deeper shade in the YSL quad, but nothing that is exactly the same as the YSL color story. The formula of the YSL is, I think it is quite a creamy shadow, and as I've said quite a few times now, it just blends out really beautifully. I think I would compare the formula, although probably not as pigmented as this brand, but comparable wise, I think it's similar to Byredo, where that is quite creamy. I think Byredo is a little bit more softer. You do get more kick up out of the pan from Byredo, and you don't really get that with the YSL. But I do think the formula is fairly comparable. But as I was saying, Byredo would be a bit more pigmented than the YSL. But I think these are just beautifully pigmented. I think they just go on beautifully on the eye. They last really well during the day and all over I just think they are really really gorgeous. So I am thrilled with these new releases from YSL down to the packaging, to the formula and the color stories. As I was saying out of the two that I've got, this one and Casbah Spices, this is my favorite color story, but the other one does look really beautiful as well. And I don't think I mentioned the price of these, and I've had a look on the internet, and I think they are pricing around 64 euros. So if that was New Zealand dollars, you're probably looking about because GST, which is goods and services tax here in New Zealand, you'd probably be looking around about 130 to 140 for one of these palettes. So they are a luxury brand and they are higher priced, but I do think the performance of these is just absolutely gorgeous. So even though it is 64 euros in one country, they could be priced a lot differently. It's not quite sometimes as simple as just doing the exchange rate and seeing what they are. You can do that as a starting point, but then if your country has other taxes and other duties, of course you have to add that as well. But even though that these are priced quite high, I think they are absolutely gorgeous and I'm just thrilled that I got them. I think they are really beautiful eyeshadows, and I'm gonna pick up one or two more color stories when I'm able to as well. They are just really, really beautiful. So that's it for today's video. I would love it if you gave it a like and subscribed, and I will see you next time. Bye.